Good morning, my name is Tanika Turner and I am the head volleyball coach at Central High School. I am entering my 19th year um, at the Central High School. I have with me my senior to my left, Naija Stanton, um, which is my outside middle hitter and a sophomore, um, Sierra Step, which is um, a setter and um, defense specialist. Um, we open our season uh, today against uh, Northside, and um, also uh, we usually open our season on the Falcon Frenzy, which will be Saturday, um, this Saturday, and we have 20 teams uh, this year. So um, we're just trying to see what we are, where we are, and we have been working hard. We are young, but um, we are doing what it takes to get better every day. Hey, Coach Turner, um, can you talk about some of the key qualities for your team to have a successful year? Um, with volleyball, uh, communication, um, working together, and playing hard. Again, um, we are young, so uh, it is a lot, and it is new to uh, a lot of our ninth graders. I have a ninth and tenth graders playing at the varsity level. So um, communicating, working together, playing hard is what we're looking for a successful season. Sierra, your coach mentioned your first game this season is later today against Northside. Are you feeling good about your first match of the 24 25 season? Yes, I am feeling very great about it. Okay. Um, coach Turner, oh, you said that you have some freshmen playing on varsity. How do you think that's going to change the team dynamic when they're playing their games? Um, it's going to be interesting, but again, um, we are young. It's no change. They are freshmen that have the potential to play again uh they're not at the level of what we want but we're trying to work to uh, get them there but um i think they'll do a great job and they're coming along uh coach with your uh, messed up, I think. uh how do you provide the motivation within your team um, we have a great coaching staff um with a lot of experience so uh i even get out and play with them I, we get on the court and um, coaches that have played, we kind of uh, try to push them by playing with them. And again, just uh, encouraging them when, and encouraging them to get out there and try, try to guess. Sierra, what do you believe to be one of the One of my weaknesses is talking, and what I'm doing to improve it is to like open up more and like talk and communicate with everyone and to let them know. Coach, what makes a successful season in your opinion? Um, for us, it's to get better every game. So um, we're not going to be measured, and we talk to the girls about the wins and losses, but it's to get better, to play 100% and to, again, increase and do things better every single game until we get into the area tournament. Hey, Coach, what is the hardest thing you have to teach your players? The hardest? Um, basic, basic volleyball, the transition coming from playing at the middle school to high school um, is new to them. So it's, it all, it's almost like you start from the beginning to try to get them. So it's harder for us to get to where we need to be. But again, we've been working all summer since we have started the first day of practice trying to get them to that level of play. Hey, now, what's the best piece of advice you gave from coaches or home court? Um, to always give 100%. Yeah. Sierra. Is it difficult to manage your responsibilities in academics in addition to playing volleyball? No, to me it's not difficult. I feel like I can manage it. Naja, as a senior, do you hope you can take your volleyball career forward and then follow it up? Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, Coach, with your experience as a coach, which is really insane, it's awesome <laughs> to have that. Uh, over, I guess, new strategies that you've had over the few years or is it all maintained the same? Um, my coaching style have changed uh, due to the personnel. Um, 
My older players tell me I have got a little soft, but it's um, a difference again in uh, the generation and the level that they are um, of playing. But um, it really hasn't changed as far as the, the style of it in the coaching, because I, I still expect the same thing. But again, I'm more so concerned with us getting better. Hey, both of the young ladies, can you talk about the work that you put in to get to this point? And can you talk about your strengths and what makes you a good volleyball player? My strengths and what makes me a good volleyball player is I don't give up, I keep going, and I take instructions very well. So whatever they tell me, I work on it and just try my best. My strength, I'm a very great communicator. Well, I try to be, and with my hitting and passing. Hey, Coach, you um, said earlier that you got soft. Did you elaborate more? Um. Well, uh, I guess my my the fussing that I do. Um, well, from the past years to now, it's just certain ones you can't talk to the way that you do. Uh, this generation is more sensitive. They are more sensitive to the coaching style. So uh, that's what I mean about when they come back and tell me um, things that I did with my older players versus now. And um, they just are not as tough in that mental aspect to take to take my style of coaching that I had back then versus now. Yes. Okay. What is the best piece of advice you gave from your coach? Um, well, I don't know how to put it. Like, every day she wants us to give 100% and she just wants you to give it your all on the court. It doesn't matter what happens, right or wrong. Okay, coach, any closing statements? Uh -huh. no, sir, we look forward to having a successful season and getting better every game. Thank you. Uh, I'm Coach Demario Pippen, uh, head football coach here at Central High School, uh, entering my second season. Uh, and I have with me uh, two of my seniors. Uh, these guys are captains of the team, uh, Christian Bishop, receiver, uh, Braden Smith, defensive back. Hey, I have a question for all y'all, if y'all don't mind. What makes a season successful in your opinion? Sorry. Uh, well, you know, just to kind of piggyback off of uh, what Coach Turner said earlier, uh, just all about improvement, you know, week in and week out. You know, you want to see your guys improve, not making the same mistake that they were making the week before. Uh, and even as a coaching staff, you know, we want to always go deeper into our schemes, deeper into our scouting, because if we're demanding these kids to be better, we have to be better as coaches as well. So just continuing to improve day in and day out and having that willingness to learn. Um, I would probably say chemistry. Like, the team has to have a lot of chemistry. And I feel like over this year, we've gotten better with that, like team bonding and stuff like that. So I feel like going into this year, we're going to be, going to be good with that. You know, to piggyback off what they said, um, chemistry from last year to now, I feel like we became closer as a team. Um, so, yeah. Coach, after winning against one of your rival schools last season, Bryant, how do you think you can improve on that win even more? Oh, uh, well, the main thing is, you know, we just always like to focus on the man in the mirror. Uh, and if we can make sure that guy's on point, regardless who the opponent is, you know, we'll play to, you know, our highest capability. And with a school like Bryant, you know, it's, it's a lot of emotions involved with that because, you know, a lot of these kids grew up together. I actually coached a lot of those kids when I was at Eastwood. So my biggest thing is eliminate all emotions. You know, it's not personal, it's business. So just keep it a business matter. Christian, you guys have improved a lot from your 22, 23 to 23-24. Do you feel like this will continue into 24, 25? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, I feel like our mindset has changed a lot um, since Coach Pip has been here. Um, you know, we, we, we've grown as individuals and as a team. Uh, for the players, what would you say is the coach provided motivation for you guys and keeping your entire team? 
Uh, I say he just stays on us all the time. Like, it's never a day where he's, like, not on us. Like, even if he don't say anything during practice, best believe after practice he's going to have something to say. So I just feel like he provides us with that energy. Like, even in the weight room, like, you can tell the difference between last year and this year, the energy that's in the weight room and the atmosphere that he's brought to the team. So, yeah. I feel like um, he holds us to the expectation. Like, no, no matter what we do, whatever it's footwork, weight room, you know, studying film. There's always an expectation to, um, you know, keep building on ourselves. And, yeah. Coach, with all the motivation you give your students, how do you keep yourself motivated? Uh, well, main thing is through prayer, uh, daily devotion. You know, I make sure I wake up, pray, read my Bible every day, uh, get my five minutes of meditation in, visualization, you know, seeing things before they happen, things of that nature. So. You know, that's one way I motivate myself. You know, I got to make sure I see it before it happens. So if I want to be great, I want to be successful, I got to meditate on those things and see, and see them before they come. So how you kept your team focused for the upcoming season? Uh, well, honestly, that's one of the biggest challenges, you know, when you're a head coach is keeping everybody focused. Uh, because, you know, like, especially right now, um, we had we went five and five, which you know was an okay season, but it was a major improvement from where we were. Uh, and then now you got a lot of people saying, "Hey, man, you guys gonna have a successful season? You got good players. You're a pretty good coach." But the main thing is, like I said earlier, focusing on the man in the mirror. You know, not getting caught up in the outside noise, whether it's positive or negative. You know, we know we the ones that have to go out there and play the football game. So. We got to stay focused within each, within each other and hold each other accountable because if we do that, regardless of what the outside world is saying, we're going to play at a high level. So what are your guys' favorite bonding, like team bonding activity? Um, I would say after practice, like this year, it's been very, very, like after practice, we would just say, let's go get something to eat. And we'll be out there for like two hours just chilling, hanging out. Even like after practice, we'll sit. Um, at the field house and just hang out and talk like it's ne nothing ever too big. We just like spending time with each other. And I feel like it's grown over the years. Hey, coach, what are the greatest challenges most coaches are facing today? Uh, well, one of the biggest things, you know, is uh, social media. Um, kids got a lot of access to a lot of things, you know, so things may be going on in kids can see those things and be exposed to them. So that's a big challenge for me, you know, as a coach is keeping these guys focused, like like not buying into some of the things you see because when you see things online, social media, uh, you can see kids your age, your peers doing things that they're, they're not supposed to be doing. And you can think that it's cool, think that it's okay, you know, so I think that that's a big influence, social media. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges right there. And for my student athletes, it's a follow-up question. Uh, how do you balance school and social media and work and all that. Uh, I would say just knowing like what to do and like where to do it. Like, of course you got practice, get out at 6, 6.30, whatever. So I feel like after that time, you should have your, enough time to do what you have to do as a student athlete and stand on top and not wait until the last minute to do what you got to do. Christian, your coach mentioned that this is his second season teaching do you feel like he's doing anything different from the previous coach to help you guys improve? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, well, me and Coach Pip, we've been, I've been working with Coach Pip since, you know, I was in sixth grade. So um, it's always been the same with him. Um, always motivational, always pushing us. You know, he just wants, he wants the best for everybody. Hey, can all three of you guys just like the mood a little bit. I know everybody has a pregame ritual. Talk about how you get hyped, what kind of music you listen to, what gets you to the point where you're ready to play? Uh, well, me personally, like, as I got a little older, you know, when I was a player, you know, I like to listen to music, get hyped, but now that I'm older and coaching, like I said earlier, <coughs> meditation, you know, for the game, I like to visualize my success, you know, visualize my players making plays, visualizing me out scheming this, this coach I'm about to face, you know, so things of that nature right there, because once I can, you know, visualize and meditate, it gives me a calm mind going into the game so I can think. Yeah, for me, um, it's more kind of like Coach Pip. I kind of just sit in my little corner and just, just chill, relax, listen to my music, you know. Um, what type of music do you like to listen to? 
uh, uh, it varies, you know, from rap to R and B, whatever. I'm, how I'm from, I'm feeling. Uh, for me, um, I say hype music. Like I'm like a hype type of person, so I definitely be listening to my hype music and, like Coach said, visualizing what I'm gonna do this game, visualizing getting the pick six, or visualizing making ten tackles a game, stuff like that. My last question is, guys, I know that you were right there at the brink last year of taking a bigger step and mm -hmm. making the playoffs. So talk a little bit about regrouping. And sometimes refocusing to truly get to where you want to be. Uh, well, for me as a coach, um, details. Um, I feel like those those things are huge. Uh, like Because sometimes you can have a, a big picture, you know, but the thing is, like, how did you get to that picture? You know, how did that picture come about? So you got to be able to explain to these kids and put their mind in a state where, you know, I'm thinking like you, coach, you know, versus being robots. Hey, go left, go right. You know, I want my guys coming back to me, getting me intel. Hey, coach, this guy's doing this. Hey, he's doing this. They're playing this. They're playing that. So really the main thing is just equipping these guys more and allowing their football IQ to grow so they can actually help us out as coaches. So that's the big, the biggest thing for me. Yeah, well, my captains, how would your teammates describe you, though? Um, I think they'll describe me as uh, a leader. Um, I can be playful sometimes, you know. Uh, but I think I'm mostly hardworking, you know. Uh, I would say they'd describe me as the hype man. I'm the one who's always talking. You know, I like like to lighten the mood at practice a lot. Get going back and forth with Christian at practice, you know. So yeah. Coach, anything you think you guys should work on as team captain? I feel like leadership with the young guys could definitely be something that we can work on, like leading the young guys into, you know, maturing. One of your toughest losses last year was against Hillcrest. It was like 49-14, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, Hillcrest was with the seven eight this year, so you're not gonna have a chance to play. Uh, well, actually, uh, I mean, a team like that, if they out your way, then, you know, it is a relief, you know. But for me personally, like, I really don't care who we play. You know, I'm always focused on, like I said, the man in the mirror. In that Hillcrest game, I learned a lot in that game as well because it was actually, the score was actually 14-7 to at halftime. And, like I said, they ended up beating us uh, by 28 points. But they scored three touchdowns on special teams. So that was something that – I really keyed in on this offseason as a head coach, like making sure my special teams are on point because for a team to score three touchdowns on us on special teams, that's that's on us as a coaching staff. So that's one thing I kind of dabbed in on. But with Hillcrest moving to 7-8, you know, that, that that means the region's wide open. So at this time, like, why not, you know, Central High School take that step forward, you know, and become the guys in the region? Coach, any closing statements? Uh, you know, we'll just come out and support the Falcons this season. Uh, we got a great group of, group of young men. Uh, I'm excited to see what they're going to do. Uh, I truly believe that these kids are uh, committed above and beyond what I'm asking them to do. Like, uh, and, and it's just a testament to these kids, like the leadership as well. Like, you know, like that's why I brought these two kids because they're, they're an example of what we're building and what we want to do. Like, not just on the field. Like, if you look at these kids' GPAs, 3.7, 3.8, plus 20 on the ACT, things of that nature. So that's the biggest thing about these kids. Like, you know, because sometimes you can have a certain, you know, perception around your school, you know, and I don't want that for our kids. And these are good young men. So that's the main thing, you know, just come out and support our kids. Well, good morning. I am Josephus Patrick, the head cross country coach at the Central High School. And this morning I'm joined with two of my stellar student athletes. I have Neve McNaughton and I have Will Peterson. And we're glad to be here this morning. Hey coach, what are your team expectations for the offense? Well, my team's expectation this season is to build and get better every day with uh, us peaking at the finish line, which will be sectionals and uh, state. So those are expectations just to drive and build, work harder every day. So at the end of the season, we're peaking at the right time to reach the goals that we've set. Well, cross country can be a very physically demanding sport. Would you say the risk is worth it? Um, 
<clears throat> yeah, hundred uh, percent. I mean, the feeling after crossing the finish line in a race is really unbeatable, um, and it, um, it's one of my main um, focuses in driving points, um, and it, it really helps um, provide motivation, especially in practices on really hard days. Yeah. Um, you were talking about sectionals. How do you, are there any specific goals that you have set up for sectionals? Well, each individual athlete has their own goals that they must achieve every day and throughout the season. Um, for our team, we don't have a large team, but we do have a team that is steadily gaining athletes every year, every day. Um, but for sectionals, we want to be number one. And that's the goal uh, with me, with the women, and with Will, with the men. I don't see why that should be a problem for us. Uh, for you, uh, how do you describe yourself as an athlete? Do you get better, or is there something you tell yourself to do just to pack yourself up? Well, I've dealt with injury a lot throughout my seasons. So the biggest thing for me is just staying healthy. So as an athlete, I'm always focusing on nutrition and how I'm looking after my body. So at a certain point, this sport is also about looking after yourself. What specific goals have you set for yourself this cross country season and how do you plan to achieve it? Well, last year I got injured two days before sectionals, which was a big disappointment. So my biggest goal this season is just stay healthy through the whole season and make it to state. Which strengths do you have that makes you a great athlete? Well, um, I mean, cross country is a, a very mentally demanding sport and a physically demanding sport. Um, so really just having mental fortitude, being able to push through pain, um, because in a race there will always be a moment where you will want to give up or you want to quit, and just being able to push through that, you really need that mental fortitude to be good at cross country. Yeah, I have to agree with Will on that one. It's about the mental strength running, especially cross country when it's a longer race. It's all the mentality thing, which is something I'm still working on myself. For the players, so cross country is a very tedious sport. What is the longest time that you had for 200 meters? For the 200 meters, like the dash? Yeah. Um, well, we don't really focus as much on that sprinting speed. We do do some um, 800 meter um, and cross country repeats um, to build some of that speed. But um, with cross country, we mainly do um, our training is 800, one mile, um, we'll do two mile workouts sometimes. And then our long runs will be around like um, six to 10 miles anywhere. So those will really help kind of build our endurance. I would agree with Will, I've never timed my 200. We would incorporate 200s into workouts sometimes, but generally for cross country, it's all long distance. Hey Will, how do you bounce back from a tough loss and maintain sportsmanship? Yeah, um, I mean, I've had some tough losses in races before, um, especially really close ones, um, and really just learning from that, like not feeling bad for yourself. Um, it's really easy to see a loss and say that it was some other factor, um, but you really have to take that as a motivation um, and to just keep going forward with that. What is your most favorite and least favorite distance to To race? Uh, I really enjoy the 5K for cross country. I mainly do the mile during track season, but the 5K in cross country is always really nice. The courses are nice and the people are always very supportive. Coach, how do you keep your team motivated and engaged in the races? So with this being my first season here, we're going to have to figure that out during the first meet and build upon that. But every day of practice, we talk about, as Will mentioned, mental fortitude. Because there's no easy practice, there's no easy meet. But the goal is to do better than you did the day before or the meet before. And that comes with the hard work that both of these athletes put in along with the other members of the team. And as long as we continue to do that every meet, we should be able to be stronger and better. All of you guys, let me ask you this question. We know how mental sports really are. And a lot of people don't really understand how mental as a former football player, does it affect you how hot it is when it rains, if you're not feeling well? Talk about how you overcome all the different things to be successful when you So of course, doing mileage, that's one of the hardest things you can do. Now, like football, we don't have the pass on, which is a whole other uh, deal to deal with with acclimating the students and ourselves as coaches. So our biggest thing is to stay hydrated, 
as me spoke on earlier, um, make sure we're putting the right things in our body. But um, when, it, when it comes to cross country, you're only dealing with the elements. If we're dealing with the meat, we got them running in the rain as long as there's no thunder or lightning. If it's at practice, we will try to replicate the same thing to a certain extent. But um, every day out there, there's, there's no clear answer of what you're gonna get, but you have to be mentally ready to deal with the atmosphere that you're gonna be in, no matter the circumstance. And players, I know some days when you just don't feel like doing this. I mean, physically, it's, I just don't feel, and I mean, the cross country, it's basically running. <laughs> so those days when you just, you know what, I just don't feel like doing this. I know it's a mental thing, but talk about how you kind of overcome that too. Yeah, um, I mean, we will have hard days and we'll have easy days, and it's really important to take those easy days easy and the hard days hard. Um, and sometimes it's difficult to do, um, especially taking days easy, um, and you'd think that um, it'd be really easy just to do an easy day. Um, but really just being able to take an easy day and run and then rest and recover. Recovery is really important um, in small things like feeling sore can really impact your performance. Um, so really being able to rest and recover on those easy days, which will really help you for those harder days. Yeah, I mean, running is just about consistency. It's about showing up every day. And I think the biggest thing with cross country is the days that you don't want to run are the days that it's most important to get in the workout and the days you grow the most. Hey, what's the best piece of advice you gained from your coaches? The best piece of advice I've received from Coach Patrick is just Giving it your all is it's the best you can do. As long as you're giving 100% every day, then you're doing your best, and that's all that you need. Coach, talk about some of the keys for your team to have a successful year. So the keys for us to have a successful year is going to start with our bodies. Taking care of our bodies, staying hydrated. Uh, next is going to come the mental aspect. And then once you have those three things, the rest of it kind of falls in place because, as I mentioned before, Acclimation is what we're doing this whole season to reach our final end point, which is to go to sectionals and then go to state. Um, so the biggest thing for myself and the athletes is to just work on ourselves personally. Um, being a student athlete is not easy. Being a coach and a teacher is not easy. But we all find a fortitude to do it every day. And the days that I might not feel like coaching, I can't allow that to creep into my mind because that may be the days my students or athletes want to take off. But um, us continuing to grind and give it what we have, no matter what we're facing, is going to help us reach the, the end point. This is for both the athletes. Do you guys have anything holding you back like, while doing your races? Is there any like, kind of distractions that you have? Um, well, people in cross country like to ring kettlebells at you, which is distracting, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, I think the main, the main distraction is your own mind telling you you can't do it. Uh, most of the people in cross country meets are very supportive, but there are a lot of people, which I guess if that's an issue, that could be distracting as well. Yeah, um, I mean, I think my main thing when I'm running is to actually avoid being distracted because if you kind of fall into a state where um, you're not really thinking about how hard you're running, you can slip off really easily. Um, and so kind of being present in the moment the whole time and always pushing your pace, um, which is a key thing to really like get a, a personal record and to import, improve. Coach, any closing remarks? Um, we, we appreciate you having us. Um, we would love your support on August 29th in Montebello. We have our two mile Thompson Invitational that we will be participating in and hopefully coming out with a win for our whole team, and personal records for our athletes. So we thank you. Uh, my name is Dennis Conner. This, uh, this is my fourth year, going into my, my fourth year coaching the uh, girls' flag football team. Uh, we, um, and, but this is my 37th year coaching overall. Uh, from, from where we are now to where we started from, the first day of practice, I, I'm like, oh, I don't think I done made the right decision. <laughs> but to where we are now, uh, I have with me uh, Ms. K.R. Ryan and Cam Devereaux. Cam is our quarterback, and K.R. is our linebacker and running back. K.R. will be the first young lady in Central history
to let all four years in flag football. And where we are now, in the very first day, our program is growing each day to the point on Monday gonna be my cutoff day. I'm, I'm all, I'm, uh, we're up now from, from seven young ladies the very first year to about 20. And so we just, I mean, the program is growing itself, it's, it's, but it's a testament to the young ladies. They get out, you know, they have gone out and recruited a lot for the uh, program. And I'm, and I'm, and, you know, I also give, you know, a great, great, great testament to uh, my coaching staff. Coach, uh, they are both named Coach Christian Simmons and uh, Coach Jerry Simmons. They do all, they, they do all the work. I mean, a lot of time I just do, you know, I fuss here and fuss there and um, go somewhere else and take care of a little small paperwork. But those two coaches do all the paperwork for this uh, flag football team. Hey, Coach, what changed your mind from your initial reservations about the sport? Uh, it, it, it wasn't a, a reservation. It was just, uh, will the young ladies take to the sport, and will they, will they be able to take my coaching style? Of course, I had to kind of, kind of, uh, you know, when you coach college and high school, you have to take a serious back seat from it. But I think the thing that helped me some years when I first started coaching, I was able to coach girls softball. I mean, I was able to coach softball. So I remember a lot of things about the young ladies in coaching softball back then. Cam, last year, you guys beat Bryant 26 to zero. Central has a pretty big rivalry with Bryant. Do you guys feel like you're gonna be able to beat them again this year? I mean, I don't wanna be cocky, but I mean, yeah. I think we have a pretty good chance. I think this group of ladies has really grown over the summer, and I think we have as good of a chance as, as ever. Can you being the first black football player to make it through all four years of the Alabama history? How, do you, how have you noticed the changes in the sport so far? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I've noticed more girls are excited to play. I've noticed younger girls are looking up to us now and we're kind of more of role models. Also, flag football is in the Olympics now, so we have a chance to go on an even higher level. And it's just getting more exposure on the media and more exposure to the world. Uh, this is for uh, both the players. Um, what advice do you have I would say just work hard. Um, don't doubt yourself. Don't undermine yourself. Um, just work hard, and it'll all pay off. I would say this is a fairly new sport. You're not going to know everything when you first come in, but just be prepared to learn and be prepared to make mistakes. And you can't self-doubt. You can't have self-pity because, like our coach always says, it's selfish. It's a team sport. So if you don't know something, ask questions. Don't be scared to be involved with the team. This is to the two ladies and the coach. Um, what does success mean to you via women's analysis? And how has that definition evolved? <laughs> Um, success for us is mindset. Mindset is success. It's not if you lost the game, it's how you lost it. Not if you win the game, it's how you win it. Um, our coach always puts a champion mindset on us. She pushed that. We break off with that. So success for us is your rebound. If you catch, if you miss a catch, how you going to catch the next ball? I think success is team growth and personal growth. Um, like Hayward said, you know, don't self-pity yourself um, and just keep growing and keep being better. Uh, I know over, over the last three years, um, um, we will play maybe one or two games before we get into our area game. So this year, uh, our first game is tonight at 6 o'clock. And this, this year will be our very first year going to play in the Hoover Tournament. I think about 10 teams playing in it. Before we get into the uh, area play, we're going to be played about seven or eight games, and that will help us give us a measure about the different things that we need to do, things we need to work on. And we're looking at getting better and better each day, each minute, and um, every day we come out there to practice. Two players 
How difficult is it to stay focused with all your responsibilities as a student athlete? Well, you can go first. Um, me, I'm involved in two other sports and I'm involved in three other clubs. I would say my focus is more on time management. So you have to communicate with your superiors. Hey coach, I'm gonna be late to this practice because I gotta go to this practice. You just gotta have communication. And when it comes to focus, you just gotta keep practicing it because you're not gonna get it right every time. You're gonna miss certain things. Just don't let the stress get to you. Like Hillary said, time management. If you know you can't do it at home because you have practice, do it at school. And just do what you do like wisely. Just make sure you get all your work done in time. Don't procrastinate. Don't let it build up. Coach, you mentioned that you also coach college. What is the difference between your high school players versus your college players? Oh, man. Uh, because College players, you go out and recruit. And high school players, you give whatever that comes to you. And so therefore, it's, it's a different mindset. In college, you know, I told many kids, hey, if you don't do this, I'm gonna go find me someone else. But I also tell, you know, I also tell my players now, when they get to the point that they don't wanna do something, that's why they call me coach. I'm gonna teach the next young lady to do the same thing that you're doing or do it better. To the young ladies, you talked about having an opportunity for the Olympics, which is great. And I know Central had the first young lady to receive a scholarship to play football. Does the fact that now you more people, colleges are offering scholarships and you have opportunities to go to the next level, how important is that to you in terms of you choosing to play football? With me, I always wanted to play football, scholarship or not. Ninth grade, I didn't think I was going to get a scholarship for it. It was just so fun to do. The passion is what drives me, but scholarships are just a bonus. I never imagined that there would be scholarships given out, and it's a really cool opportunity to have because, um, you know, you put in that work and you get something out of it, and it just it feels nice. And what was the first impression when you told your parents that you were going to play football? Uh, I've always been pretty rough, so my mom was just like, okay, this is what we're doing next. Like, middle school, I was busy in middle school. She was like, okay, you off soccer, off volleyball, let's go to flag football. Um, I always threw the ball in the backyard with my dad, and I was like, you know, it would just be cool. I mean, I played on a flag football team when I was younger, but I feel like I didn't really take it seriously just because I was young. But when I learned that Central had a flag football team, I was like, I could probably join this and have fun with it. Um, okay, as a captain, how would your teammates um, I feel like the first thing they would say is passionate because they know I'm passionate when it comes to us having good energy. I'm passionate when it comes to us losing because I'm always give y'all a talk. Like, and I feel like they think I'm communicative. Like, they know when I'm on the field, I'm a talk. When we in the locker room, I'm a talk. And I feel like they're they know I'm open to anything. Y'all come, y'all got bad grades, come to me, tutor, got you. Y'all feeling bad at home, come to me, therapist type. Coach, you mentioned that you've had 37 years of coaching experience. While flag football is only a recent addition to high school sports being added four years ago, what do you feel are the differences between flag football and other sports? It's no difference because you, 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 you're coaching uh, student athletes and you coach them with a passion to, to, to make them become a better person. In all my coaching days, that's the main thing. Of course, I teach them the, the game, but I also teach them how to become a better person because once you teach them the game and how to be a better person, one day this person will become a great addition to, to the world or to the United States or to the state of Alabama. Coach, can you talk about process of coaching regular football and kind of have the feeder patterns where kids kind of played it a lot. So in terms of them having an understanding when they came to high school, but a sport like flag football, a lot of times you had to teach them like the techniques of the game and all that. Talk about not having a true feeder pattern where kids have kind of played it a lot. Talk about how much detail it goes into teaching them how to play, how to do that, how to do this, how to do that as far as those techniques from flag football. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's a tedious, it's a tedious thing because it's, it, 
you have to go over, you have to go to techniques and everything that's dealing with flag football every day. Because if you don't go over it every day, uh, the young lady's gonna forget about something. So therefore, you try to make sure that you go over something, something that they, that's involved in the game every day. And then once you put everything together, then they they'll, 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 they will understand because I had a ninth grade to say, coach, now I understand what you're talking about. When we was doing this, because they're going to ask all the time, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? They're just, I guess they're just young lady. Why are we doing this? How can we got to do this? Why we got to go this way? Because it's all part of the game. We're not going to do anything that's not involved the game. Each, each minute that we are there, we're doing different things that involve the game. Even to the point of I might ask you a question and you're going to have a question, it's going to be right. You're going to be in the right position and I'm, and I'm going to ask you, did you do that right? And then you're going to say, you might say, no. I said, no, you had it right. But I wanted to know, did you know? This is more about the players. Um, is there any piece of advice that you would like to give other students that want to be like you? Um, my piece of advice is to just go out and try. Like, all I did my ninth grade year was come to one practice and I was hooked. All you gotta do is come to one practice. See if you like it. If you don't, move on. That's it. Just give it your all. You don't have to be the best. You just have to have fun with it. I think, you know, it's not about, well, I mean, you have to have a little bit of skill to it, but just have fun. You know, you don't need to be sad because you dropped a catch. Just. Keep your head up and move on. Just have fun with it. Uh, come out and see the young ladies. Um, you know, the student athlete, these young ladies have a, a uh, their GPA is a is an overall 90 for the whole team. So that's, I mean, uh, when I looked at that the other day, I was, uh, I was totally amazed. But the point that we are at now, uh, the kids enjoying themselves. Uh, you know, some of them didn't know how to take me because I'm, you know, I'm a big old coach and, you know, I'm loud in, in the job that I do in the school. And, but they love each other. I love all the young ladies. Come out and see us play. And, um, and uh, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a great time today. We're going to have a great time all Saturday. So come out and see us play.